Hello, it's Brian Koble again, Advanced Synergy's Director of High Performance Homes. If you watched part one of this series, you know that there are quite a few intricate insulation details that need to be done in order to meet the ResNet Grade 1 insulating criteria. So let's go in and watch the insulation professionals do their job. They are professionals for a reason, because they know how to organize and stage the job, they have the right insulation products on site, and the right tools for cutting, fitting, and attaching the insulation. So before we join them, I'd like to review a few of those helpful items. Let's first talk about the personal protective equipment recommended for installing bad insulation. To help me, I'm going to introduce you to one of our installers, Pedro Castaneda. Here's the PPE that is recommended for this particular job. A hat for protecting your head as you work overhead, glasses for protecting your eyes, an N95 dust mask to protect you if exposures exceed one fiber per cc in this work environment. Long sleeves for protecting your arms, long pants for protecting your legs, and gloves to protect your hands from cuts and abrasions. Making sure the right products are on site for properly insulating all the areas in the home is important. Insulation comes in a variety of R values and forms. Bats come in plain, as you will see used here, or with paper craft facing or other types of vapor retarder facings. You can get bats with stapling tabs or in a variety of pre-cut widths and lengths to fit both standard and advanced framing. The point is, you need to know the home you're insulating, make sure you have the right R value to meet the code, Find out if the vapor retarders are required and make sure that you have the combination of products you need to complete the job. And finally, let's go over some basic tools. The first thing to note is Pedro's bucket, which makes it easy for him to carry tools in from the truck and have them readily accessible before he starts the job. In the bucket, Pedro has his hammer stapler, a dust mask just in case he needs it for personal comfort, safety glasses, gloves, and also his cutting tool. Inexperienced installers may need a tape measure to help them with the non-standard cavities. A clean worksite is a safe worksite. Before installation begins, ensure the worksite is clean and has been swept so all debris is removed. Load each room with the amount of insulation you estimate will be needed while making sure it is readily accessible. Leave a walking area so that tools and product aren't in your way as you begin to install the insulation. This also leaves a path for easily moving your ladder during installation. All blocking and air sealing that will be covered with the insulation should be installed prior to insulating. This could include around windows and doors, all penetrations, and inaccessible areas such as fireplaces, inserts, small attic spaces, and behind tubs and showers. For optimum energy efficiency and meeting Energy Star requirements, top and bottom plates must also be air sealed. Here we see Pedro beginning his installation by friction fitting insulation in the stud cavities. This makes the insulation more accessible from his ladder so he does not have to make multiple trips up and down, making the job quicker. You'll see that Pedro starts at the top of the cavity and works his way down. This eliminates gaps at the top of the cavity. Around obstructions, Pedro is sure to take his time and has cut this fiberglass bat to fit the irregular size of the cavity. He has placed half the bat behind the gas line, and then he carefully places the other half on the inside of the gas line. There are various obstructions in wall cavities, attics, and floors that will require the installer to split insulation. Such obstructions include electrical wires, alarm system wires, plumbing, and other service lines. In tall cavities, you often have to use two separate bats of insulation. In that case, it's fine to butt the ends together. Here the crew is ensuring that these rock wool bat ends are butted tightly and that there are no gaps. Obstructions can range from odd cavity sizes to outlet boxes to horizontal blocking. The important thing is for the installer to take his time and cut the insulation to fit so that there are no gaps or voids. Here we are going to watch Pedro insulate a wall. This wall has a lot of odd-sized cavities, wiring, gas lines, and other services, and is also nine feet tall with horizontal obstructions. You'll see he begins by measuring the width of the cavity and cutting the bat to fit. 
He cuts the bat about a half an inch wider and longer than the cavity so that it will stay in place and won't fall out. Pedro is well practiced so he visually compares the bat to the cavity, but for most installers measuring and cutting against a straight edge may be needed. You'll see that as Pedro cuts the insulation he creates small pieces of scrap. He places those on top of the bag the insulation originally came in. This makes cleanup easier and ensures that all of the scrap is readily accessible for installation in small cavities. Pedro measures and cuts multiple pieces of insulation for the band so he only has to make one trip up the ladder for several cavities. Once Pedro is finished with the bulk of the installation, he double checks his work, pulls the insulation outward to fill the cavity, and uses any scrap pieces to fill any small gaps. Pedro and his installation partner are obviously professionals. Together this two-man team air sealed and insulated this 3,400 square foot, two-story home with nine foot tray ceilings, a bay window, a fireplace, and many other intricate cavities in just over four hours. They had the right insulation on the job to meet the code, they had the right tools for the job to make installation efficient and easy, and they staged their work for time efficiency. And in my opinion, they insulated to ResNet grade one standards using BAT insulation. They made sure the insulation filled the cavities top to bottom, front to back, and side to side, and was in contact with the air barrier. The home is now ready for pre-drywall insulation inspection. We'll conduct that final walkthrough in video three. If you've learned anything from this presentation, it's that the details count. It's the small areas, the hard to access areas, and the cracks and penetration where details aren't met and energy is lost. It's also where the inspectors and raters like me tend to look. I know that if these areas aren't addressed, then the insulators on the job are not doing the quality work needed to meet ResNet Grade 1 or the energy code. From watching these professional insulation installers, I think you'll agree that we don't have to worry about this home meeting either. NEMA has many of these insulation tips and more available free of charge.